In this video, I want to talk about central moments of a distribution. And we're going to introduce this concept by means of an example. So let's think about a particular case for a type of a variable where we have a PDF, which just looks something like this. So it just has a straight line at, let's say, x equals 10. And what sort of variable does this represent? Well, it's kind of the arbitrary case where x is just a constant, which just equals 10. But bear with me because this is a good way to sort of introduce this particular concept, even though it's quite, it seems like quite an arbitrary one. So let's think about what it would actually mean to take the expectation of x and what we would get for that. Well, in principle, we could do an integral, and in order to do the integral, we would actually need to integrate something which is called a Dirac delta function. Don't worry about what a Dirac delta function is, just, I just wanted to include that for completeness. But intuitively, the expected value of x would just be equal to 10, because our variable just always takes on a value of 10. And secondly, what about the expectation of x squared? What would that actually equal for this particular case? Well, because the variable is just always at 10, then the expected value of x squared is just going to be 10 squared, which is 100. And so the first sort of moment here is quite interesting. It tells us where our variable is centered around. The second one on its own doesn't just look that interesting. It just tells us what the mean squared is, really. So let's think about how we might make this sort of second moment a little bit more interesting. And one way we can make it a little bit more interesting to tell us a little bit more about the data would be to say, what's the expectation of x minus the mean, so 10, all squared? Because what this is doing now is it's telling us what's the sort of average value which the, the sort of square distance of points uh, away from the mean is. So it's telling us something about the spread of the points around the mean. And for this particular case, it would actually turn out because x is always equal to 10, that this would actually be equal to zero. And straight off, using the sort of first moment condition and using the second moment condition, we would straight away be able to see that this was just a constant at x equals 10. Whereas, although you could reconstruct it from this sort of second uncentered moment, then it's just a little bit more complicated to do that. So this second moment, which is centered around the mean, is what we refer to as the second central moment of the distribution. And another word for the second central moment of the distribution is just the variance of our variable x. And what this sort of tells us, if you sort of think about a case for a less arbitrary variable, which perhaps looks something like this sort of blue line here, is it tells you something about what's the expected value of the square distance of points away from the mean. So it might sort of tell you that the expected value of the square distance of points away from the mean is something like 2, let's say, for this sort of blue line here. So that, that actually kind of tells us something about what the referred to as the shoulders of a distribution look like because it's telling you about the spread of points which are relatively near to the mean. In the next video, we're going to talk about how higher order moments or higher order central moments actually tell us something about the tails of a distribution. In particular, the fourth central moment tells us something about the tails of our distribution. Also, I just wanted to say that the variance of a variable x, because of the way we defined it up here, we know that this, because we're sort of taking the square distances, it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero. It's going to be equal to zero for the case where our variable x is a constant. 